Coming up on This Week in Cars, the Chrysler 300 gets naked, the Lamborghini Murcielago is over, and the next Mazda sports car might be powered by hydrogen. Welcome everyone to This Week in Cars. First things first, if you can see me, that's because of StormOnDemand.com. They handle our hosting and all the hosting for uh, everything on This Week in. So, if you need cloud computing, go to StormOnDemand.com. The next thing is Crystal Stranger, my normal co-host, couldn't make it today. So, in her place, filling her mighty shoes, is Johnny Lieberman, Senior Editor of Motor Trend. Hey everybody, how you doing? Hey Jonathan, good to be here. Thank you. Um, uh, so, we have a full plate of food to digest. Let's get to it. Starting with the Chrysler 300, uh, which showed up naked uh, last week on a photo shoot in Auburn Hills. Isn't that where Chrysler is? Yeah. So, we have a... Oh, we have a photo of it. Now, it is on the... If I could work in Apple, things would go much better. Um, we have a photo of it, and the reception. There it is. Oh, there we go. This is the new Chrysler 300. Um, there's the front of it. It is built on the same platform as the uh, Dodge Charger. That's their new LX platform, and everyone has been saying, based on the comments I've read, that it looks like an Audi up front and uh, WTF around everywhere else. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, I was just going over the notes, and uh, Auto News said that it has the presence and dignity of more upscale sedans. Well, that's, that's what Chrysler wanted to do with this. And, but here's the thing. What was great about the 300 is that it had no dignity. You know what I mean? It was, it was this completely American idea of, like, a big car. It didn't... It, it wasn't was a Dick Tracy car. Yeah, right. And it, right, it was trying to look gangster. Right. You know, and, and, and I think maybe it's losing that. I, I mean, I... I I've only just seen the photos. I, I'm, I'm not in love with the front. The, the side's good. Back could be okay, but it's lost the kind of giant middle finger that it was. No, you know. I mean, I think it has. I think it also, you know, a lot of folks said it looks like an Audi up front, like it's all the Audi headlights and the grill, and that's like, uh, but the side to me looks like a Taurus. That's what I see. When I see that giant rear end, the sloping, the, I mean, the front wheel arch, it looks higher than the rear wheel arch. It yeah, looks like it, yeah, it's a, Taurus. And, and yeah, that's, the arches are a little bad. It's, it's pretty formal, I will say. And that, and again, what was great about the 300, and what was important about the 300 was it was the only thing that gave Chrysler any kind of credibility. Right. You know, because they really, well, they went bankrupt. But before yeah. they went bankrupt, <laughs> <laughs> like, they, the, the, the cars were pretty bad, except for the 300 was right. pretty neat looking. And the 300 has, it's been around for what, six years now? Seven oh, years? Yeah, seven. Um, I mean, in this, eight, in this guy's. Eight? Yeah. I mean, it's been uh, a while. And so. it's still you know, doing its thing, and now you have this. So does this kill the 300, or does this bring in a new 300 customer? I don't know. And maybe, you know, the other thing that the Dodge can say is that the old 300 customer might just migrate to the nicer Charger. Because the Charger, same platform, right. same engines as was before, and now the interior, which I'm going to be sitting in soon, uh, is supposedly pretty nice. So, but the 300 didn't said said a completely different thing than the Charger even now. Absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah, I I don't know, I don't know. Or, or maybe you know all the guys that have bought 300s are they going to buy a second one? So maybe they need to move on <laughs> to a new audience. Right. You know. Um. I. Yeah. I don't think. Well, I think that's in close enough. And it, this is tough to do with icons. You know, the Nissan had it with 370Z. You know, every car that comes out and makes that statement, it's so hard to do. The second version of it. It is. Um, yeah. I don't think it'll do that badly, you know, especially if the interior is that much nicer. But but here's the thing that you know, I mean, the real thing. They made the grill smaller, so you know, if you, how do you fit a Bentley grill? Right. To there, a there is that. You, you can't know? turn that into a Phantom yeah. like you could the other one. <laughs> but the Buick. Yeah. So we got the uh, the new Buick Regal GS has been uh, outed, and um, basically it's a more powerful version of the Turbo Regal. It's still got the two liter Ecotec motor, but it's pumped up to. 255 horsepower and 295 pound-feet of torque. However, a couple notes there. Um, some people are saying that that engine can do 310 horsepower and 300 pound-feet of torque. However, uh, I had a meeting with some of the guys from Buick, 
And they were they, they never said 255 horsepower. They kept saying at least 255 horsepower. So maybe we'll, we'll be surprised. Uh huh. But the other the other story is and why it's not making gigantic numbers is it's front wheel drive only. They decided not to go with all wheel drive. Right. Um, and a lot of people are already crying foul. Like, yeah. How can you do that. Blah blah blah. Well, I mean, they came out and said all wheel drive, fast. Yeah. Now zero to sixty is under seven seconds, and and they also said we want this car to restore Buick's performance credentials. Right. I have so many <laughs> points to make. Okay, okay. Here, okay. Here's, here's one. Th by not doing all-wheel drive right now, it l gives them the opportunity to do a GSX. They can add the all-wheel drive, they can charge them more Which money. is only gonna make a 3,700 pound car heavier. Well, that's why I think they left the all-wheel drive out, because this thing already, well, no, look, the, the Regal Turbo is 3,770 or something insane. Okay. The GS with bigger wheels, bigger right. brakes, bigger, Turbo equipment, blah, 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 is going to be pushing 38, 3,900. So you're already way up in weight. So um, I don't know. Uh, I, I, I got to drive it. I will say this. The, the 220 horsepower Regal ain't that fast. And especially with stuff like the Hyundai Sonata yeah. out there, which is fast and cheaper. Now that's what everyone's a GS. Now, before we just trash on this Buick, We'll show you what it can do around a track. Uh, we have a video clip of the GNX uh, doing some rounds on a ring. Let's see the clip. Now, it is true that that's the sportive Buick we've seen probably since the GN and GNX. Yeah, since the Grand National. Um, uh, but, you know, the people have been saying, okay, the Sonata has 274 horsepower. Now, the BMW, the 328, just has 220, I believe. So it's got right. less than the right. even just the regular Regal right. Turbo. You know, and it costs more. So, uh, you know, there yeah. are arguments to be made, but... Well, let me say, I would say that the 220 horsepower Regal feels like it's a lot less power than 220. It, ju it just doesn't feel as fast as it should. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm curious to drive this car. Uh, gee, I f I'm blanking on the name, but they have the, they have the, the front shocks that kind of mitigate the torque steer you get with right. front-wheel drive only. You know, a lot of people don't need all-wheel drive. They wouldn't know what to do with all-wheel drive if they had it. So it might be good, you know? It might be good. We will all find out we'll all uh, find soon out. enough. Um, uh, moving right along, GM, Government Motors, is maybe not going to be Government Motors too long. Um, <laughs> they have uh, filed for their IPO. Trading begins on November 18th, I believe, or the 28th. Um, the deal is they're going to make 13 to roughly, they expect to make 12 to $15 billion, uh, depending on how the IPO goes. That'll be 365 million common shares at 26 to $29 a piece, plus another $3 uh, billion in preferred shares. Um, and then if the underwriters want to sell some more, they have another, uh, another chunk of shares that they can sell for up to $1.5 billion. Um, the Treasury owns about 60.8% of GM now. That's going to go down to a little over 43%. So they're selling almost a third of their share. They'll still lose money. They won't break even on it yet, uh, but they'll still have shares in the bank. And if the shares go up to around $52, <laughs> they're saying, then GM will, uh, then the Treasury will start to make money. Um, it puts GM's market cap at about $60 billion, which is uh, a little more than Ford, and about half of Toyota. Between sixty, yeah, about sixty billion is uh, what it was. But does this get rid of the begin to get rid of the stigma that GM is Government Motors? Well, I mean, no, you'll never get rid of that stigma. I mean, it doesn't. You know, it's, it's you don't think it, ever. Well, Harley Davidson, Chrysler. No, I, Harley Davidson will get rid of it. Chrysler got rid of it because because it was Reagan that bailed them out. But since it was Obama. <laughs> even even though this even though the whole Ratner Commission was started under Bush, even though it was Obama who was happened to be in office when this happened, uh, you know, <laughs> you could, it, it could be the greatest thing. Every every taxpayer in America could get like you know a check for a hundred thousand dollars because GM so successful, and it would still be socialism and communism, and it would be awful and terrible. So, so Scarlet Letter. Yeah, I, I think you know until but, the treachery is gone. Yeah, but and, and that's okay. And we're all dead. Yeah, but I, but I <laughs> okay. think that's okay. I, th I think I think it sounds as if this is a pretty good deal. The the, the one curious thing, and, and I think. Um, 
uh, today I heard it's going to happen is the Chinese company SAIC. Right. They are going to buy shares, oh, really? and they have about six billion in cash laying around. Right. So I don't know what percentage they're going to buy. I don't know if they're going to buy all the Treasury shares, but it'll be interesting to see that. GM is now not only owned by the Union in Canada, but the Communist Chinese right. as well, partially, and the Treasury Department. So, Well, I think GM's hardcore base is going to love that. They're going to love having the Chinese yeah, cash is own cash, the big chart. right? Cash is cash. You well, want people buying the stock. We can say that here, right. but right. Ca uh, cash is cash. ideology is ideology. Well, there's that too. <laughs> we'll yeah, I, don't, that. I, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see where it'll, it, it, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I mean, you know, GM is healthy. That's, I guess, yeah, the, the yeah, main thing and yeah. the good thing about this. Um, they seem to be, so... Speaking of not healthy, Chrysler's Idea Bank, which is the Barracuda. Oh, uh, this opinion. is interesting. Yeah, so Ralph Gillies, who, um, what is he's been elevated to the Dodge brand manager? He heads Dodge brand, yeah, Dodge and he's the brand chief of design for Chrysler. Chief of design for Chrysler, right. right. He said something at SEMA, which is pretty interesting. He wants to bring back the Barracuda. Now, the big problem with that is that the Barracuda was a Plymouth, and Plymouth has been dead for 15 years or however long it's been. So, okay, they've got the Challenger, which is a big two-door muscle car, emphasis on big, but a lot of muscles. What would a Barracuda be? That's my <laughs> point exactly. <laughs> See, I thought, I thought Dodge's Idea Bank had overdraft protection, and that would <laughs> keep them from doing things like this. So, you know, Gilly says, oh, customers want a Barracuda. Where would it fit? What would you do with and, it? And, and I why? wonder when they say customers want, because it's kind of like the guys that are buying the Trans Am kits for their Camaros. Like, who are they fooling? Like, right. they're, they're, Pontiac's gone. There's no Trans Am. There's no Firebird. And yeah. yet, yet you're, you've, you've mutilated your Camaro into looking like a Trans Am. So, would the Barracuda just be a mutilated Challenger? Now, the, the one real cool thing they could do, because people forget when the. When the um, Back in the 60s, when, when the Charger came out, the Charger was a two-door. When the Challenger came out, it was a severely lightened cha uh, Charger, essentially. Um, 500 pounds lighter, or maybe even a little bit more. Same big engines, you know, you had the, you had the 440 and the, the Hemi and, and the 318, all that cool stuff. So if they could figure out a way, they're not going to, but <laughs> if they could figure out a way to shrink and lighten a Challenger and keep the big motors in there, I, that'd be a Barracuda uh, worth, worth having. Well, I think that's a, the Chrysler drag pack. And the Challenger drag bag, but that's with, but street legal. It's still the size of a got, house. I mean, uh, well, I, I, certainly, look, I, certainly. I, I'm I'm born again into the light of the Challenger. <laughs> I think actually, Lee, yeah, uh, like like the RT <laughs> with a stick, pretty cool, right? But it's it's 4,200 pounds, and that's the old one. The new one, yeah, yeah. Who knows? I you, so, you know, I, you know, the idea of the Cuda is appealing in uh, a faraway land. I think <laughs> it's not for the here and now, Mr. Gillies. I hope you're listening. Um, uh, moving right along, the <laughs> but speaking of success, Chrysler, uh, the sales are up 37 percent for Q3. Um, the uh, the Jeep Grand Cherokee uh, helped lead that charge, and all the Ram trucks they sold. Uh, they sold like 90,000 cars in October, which is a big number uh, for them, and. Uh, their operating loss uh, was 84 million, which is the smallest net loss they've had since a merger. Which is great news, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> for them. And they that's increased our projections for the year. Uh, so good news all around for them. However, 11,000 Sebrings and Avengers uh, were in that number, which means so fleet fleets sales were buying. Yeah. But well, a healthy that's... Chrysler, hey, again, we're all for it. Yeah, so, yeah, especially as the um, what do you want to call it? The uh, the uh, <laughs> redheaded stepchild. Well, no, as, as they kind of start to merge more and more with Fiat, it's just kind of right. interesting to see what's going to happen going forward. And are we going to get uh, more Fiats and, and you know, are, are, is Europe going to get more Dodges and this? I, don't I think know. definitely, like at next year, you know, with the, the 40 mile per gallon hatchback Dodge, they're saying right. is going to come. Right, we'll really right, start right. to see. I think it'll right. be 2012. Right. What I'm trying to say really is, will I be able to get an Alfa Romeo? The <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> well, you should. If, right. the, if there's a God, you should yeah. have an Alfa Romeo. So, you know, like that little Julietta little wagon is. Like, and I saw some Mitos when I was there for the Paris Auto Show, are and pretty, they are. They're pretty good yeah, looking. They're pretty they're, hot. It's like a mini 8C. They're kind of. Oh, cute. Ooh, easy, Tiger. Well, they are. <laughs> that yeah. mini 8C. Yeah, you know. Um, and Chrysler has put prices to all the cars it's been launching over the last couple of weeks. So, your new Avenger, which we have photos of these, your new Avenger is. $19,245. Your new Journey is $22,245. The Grand Caravan, that's a Dodge, is $24,995. 
The Challenger SE V6, which is not this guy, so don't get your hopes up, uh, <laughs> is 24,670. The Charger SE is 25,170. And the Durango rear wheel drive, the base express model is 29,195. The all wheel drive Citadel, which you're looking at now, is 438. So bring bring money. And if I could just make one more point, I, I would like to say this because of the journey and the, the Challenger. Dodge is doing a good job with their commercials. I don't know if that's actually helping okay, sales. Well, though, now here, I'm, well, speaking I'm of commercials, those okay. Commercials. Speaking of commercials, we, let's get to that right now. Um, the next segment of the show is called Car Campaigns. So car makers spend a fortune trying to get you to pay attention, and frankly, you treat them worse than your parents. Uh, you don't write, you don't call, you don't come to visit. So we give them a chance every week to do something uh, a little longer format uh, to get their point across. This week, we've got the new uh, Chevy Duramax. Um, the Silverado HD commercials that they've just rolled out. And frankly, they're not like the truck commercials you're used to seeing. Um, they're high concept, there aren't many trucks in them, and, well, we'll let them tell the story. So the first two we're going to show, uh, the first one is just a teaser, um, and the second one uh, calls out Ford specifically. So let's see the first two. Hush, little power stroke, don't say a thing. Chevy's gonna teach you about three quarter ton towing. And once that big old trailer gets towed, Chevy's gonna. What's this all about? It's Ford Power Stroke. She's new to this kind of thing. A rookie. That's cute. What's the matter, little power stroke? Well, think about it, Al. We have over 20 billion miles of experience. She hasn't proven herself in the real world yet. Ooh! She's proven herself somewhere. So in case you're not sure who Max and Al are, those are the two gents holding two up guys. Yeah, the four tons of wood above their head. <laughs> um, uh, so GM's going straight at Ford, and I, I find this a remarkable way to do it. Um, and, and calling out Ford for not having experience is uh, the best-selling the best-selling vehicle in America for 32 years or longer. Now. Well, yeah. The other thing is, I mean, they, they're, they're using like everybody loves Raymond humor, which which seems to be a big hit, you know, like, right? You know, big guys and little babies and yeah. Maybe they know something. I, <laughs> um, apparently, they, didn't they show do. A truck, though. The, no, there <laughs> they there are show... no there are no trucks in these commercials. And, this and, is high concept. Yeah, and this you, is you cutting got, edge stuff. But you got to wonder, like you know, the, the, the Duramax and Allison. Do people outside of this table know what those two things mean? Well, well do I know what that means? Well, if you're if you're <laughs> in the market for a truck, you would probably know who Duramax and Allison are. I mean, I can get. Uh, I think it's kind of strange, but I can get that part. Okay. Um, okay. But this next one with Duramax and Allison, um, <laughs> well, we'll let you have a look at it. Here's the vid. My good friend, Duramax. Oh. Now that's the good stuff. A refreshing beverage after a long, hard day of work. Medicine for the soul. You know, Max, we've done a lot of work together. You got that right, Al. It's been over a decade now, towing, hauling. Getting the job done right. I like using the right equipment. How about that fully boxed, high-strength steel frame we work with? It's five times torsionally stiffer than before. <sighs> torsionally stiffer? Ah. Uh, <sighs> is that kind of equipment that gives us that something something to tow and haul more than ever before. Check out the chassis on that frame. Sexy. Totally redesigned with bigger and stronger guts to let us haul heavier loads. And the ride, so smooth. So very, very smooth. Now there's another minute <laughs> and a half of that. And, and I want you to, next time you're around a bunch of guys in a truck environment, I want you to find something furry to pet, and well, I want you to say torsional stiffness. Yeah, why don't they just make out? And like, over. Just, just get it over with and just start kissing each other, because, I mean... One would wonder. I, yeah. That's in the, uh, on the DVD in, okay. the, extra, in the extra features. <laughs> right, uh, the, 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 the deleted yeah. scenes, yeah, because okay. I think it's NC-17. Okay. Um, actually, <laughs> I mean, it, I, you know, again, no trucks, no... A lot of features, a lot of feature talk, but does this get to I mean, I get, truck what's people? What's interesting is those are, those are two well-known actors. 
Um, and they're pretending to be like, you know, tough guys that lift things for a living. And they can't even do that straight for a minute. They have to immediately start making fun of it, like by drinking oil. Uh, well, I mean, they're comedians. <laughs> and they're, yeah. just, they're just following the GM script. No, I know, I but like, even the guys writing it could, like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it'll work. So you're not sold. This would not get you out at your diesel, uh, yeah, but look, your I, Duramax, I, I'm not, I'm not. They're not selling those trucks. Don't, yeah. don't cop out. Uh -huh. Would that make you think, hey, I need to look o at Over the Dennis Leary Ford bids? I mean, I guess it's comedians is what you want. You just, you just want well, comedians. Well, ranting, is apparently. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Um, uh, we're going to find out so. if the truck makers buy it. Uh, so far, yeah. they haven't been. Uh, now back to the news. Um, my favorite car in the world. This is your favorite car in the world. Favorite car in the world. Poster boy throughout all the 80s, the Lamborghini Murcielago is done. That was the last one made. It was made on May 11th, and in Italian style, they just got around to celebrating it last week. <laughs> That's very good uh, point. <laughs> that one, the owner's been driving it for almost six, what, five months now. Right, right. Um, but Lamborghini uh, Super Veloce, it is uh, a color I would call orange, but they probably call Madagascar Tangelo. Oh, the, it does have a green um, name. I can't remember what it is, but yeah, it's yeah, not orange. Something yeah, something special. Like super spa or something. Right? Um, uh, but it's over. So it's going to make way for the next uh, Lamborghini supercar, which we have a picture of, uh, courtesy of Autoblog, um, that has been making the rounds, still highly covered up. Um, they preview the car in Singapore, and... The specs, based on uh, someone who went on the Ferrari chat forum, was that it's going to have a 6.5 liter V12, 700 horsepower, 502 pounds feet of torque, a carbon monocoque chassis, just like an F1. It is going to have a seven speed single clutch, not dual clutch transmission. Shifts in 50 milliseconds, it'll be 500 pounds lighter, and it'll get from zero to 60 in 2.9 seconds. All right, well, let's parse this a little bit. So okay. 6.5 liter V12 is basically a carryover. Right. And so they're just making it more powerful, which I guess they can do. I, I don't know if it's a new engine or not. Uh, Seven-speed single clutch. Um, remember the Lexus uh, LFA with you know 900 gazillion billion dollars of development money behind it. They opted to go with a single clutch. So maybe for, for I mean I think I know the reason for really high power situations when you have a dual clutch. Well, the, you have one clutch that's this big and one clutch that's this big. So it's really hard to, to have something that lasts for a while that can handle all that. So 50 milliseconds is really the, the key number there. Um, and, and nothing could be worse than E-gear, so. Well, uh, I think it's a, I think E-gear is a single clutch, so it, it, it could just be a new version of E-gear. Well, but this shifts in 50 milliseconds. Well, the, the thing well, with E-gear. E-gear e e can, well, you yeah, put it in course uh, it E-gear was, <laughs> E-gear shifted quickly. I mean, you couldn't get back on the power. It's shifting, <laughs> but oh man. Yeah, it's, it's bad and automatic. Right. Yeah. Um, Carbon mono chassis, sweet, a 500 pounds lighter, that's awesome. And that's what Lamborghini claims is their kind of modus operandi going forward is that their cars... Well, they where, open where, up their carbon fiber sensor. 700 horsepower, where do you go from there? I right. mean, you know, you make it lighter. And, yeah. And 0 62.9 is probably conservative based on the fact that the outgoing Mercy with the, the, the SV was about that fast. Well, and I was going to say, you so. know, that would still be 0.2 seconds slower than the current 911 Turbo as an automatic, essentially, with the PDK, which says in 2.7 seconds. Right. And yeah, there's a couple of things. I mean, look, the, 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 the 911 Turbo is, um, you know, it's, 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 it's made specifically for bracket racing. You know what I mean? It, it, it's got all the weight on the back tires. When you launch it, you get the weight transfer. Right. It, rear engine is always going to be a little bit faster. And, and again, the other thing is, who cares? I mean, <laughs> a tenth of a second. Well, I mean, when you're spending this kind of money, this is bragging rights money. I, this I, is, I guess. I this mean, is, the guys that, I'm with what's her name? I'm, I'm with Cinnamon that I met last yeah, week. The guys that are with Cinnamon, they don't even know what 0 to 60 means. You know, but just they like, know the number. Most expensive but they know the number. Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> but they know the number. You yeah, know, I, I, right. I think it, it is conservative as well. I mean, there's, I have a feeling there's no way especially for the, the money they're going to charge for this, which is going to make oh, babies million, weep. Right? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be $500,000. Yeah, yeah. To start. Um, yeah, exactly. And that's before they... Before you make it livable yeah. inside, yeah. it's going to be a half million dollars. <laughs> yeah. um, but so. it's gone, and it's coming. Long live the king. Cool. But speaking of the Porsche 911... Speaking of the actual king, or maybe the actual king. Well, well. The new 911, which actually will not be called the 998. They've decided to go back to, I can't remember what it is, 991, I believe, because, <laughs> well, where do you go after 998, 999? Right. You know, well, why can't they go to 991 then? I forget. Anyways, okay. I think it's going to be the 991. But anyways, it's the next 911. Um, we don't know much about it yet. Uh, seen a lot of spy photos of it. 
We it have looks, one. We have one here. It looks like a 911. Um, it's uh, the, all of them, and we don't. We're, we're assuming that this uh, isn't the turbo. This is just kind of the regular 911, but it still has the the air intakes on the haunches, just like the turbo would. And so, every, you think the regular one will? Well, every every 991 slash 998 slash next 911 we've uh -huh. seen has that. Well, but the, but those are fake. Yeah, those are stickers. Uh, Okay, but there's some. Yeah, there's. I saw one that was doing winter testing where they were real. So, they, so huh. sometimes the wide. You know, they might just have the all of them have the wide body. Right. They might just do that. Um, well, I mean, it does have a it does have a massive rear end. I mean, like the rubber on there is ginormous. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean where do you, huge where do you tire go? Bills. So, yeah, how do you make it handle better? More rubber. You know, so. And there, there's. Um, well, do you want it to handle better? Does it need to handle better? I mean, it already is. Where do you go? How do you? Re I mean, it's it's it's, Pretty it's awesome. interesting. Yeah, exactly. It, it it it's a tough spot to be in, you know, especially if you're the designer. Like, what? You, well, know. they're saying perhaps active front aerodynamics. Uh, yeah, front kind of spoiler. kind of like the Ferrari four five eight. Yeah, they changes somehow. So. But it's all rumor and speculation at this point. Yeah, we just know that it's going to look like an nine eleven. Yeah, and uh, have LEDs. So. Uh, oh, hey, more LEDs because yeah, you can't get enough of that. those. Um, uh, so one of the things, though, Porsche wanted to do with this car, uh, we discussed a few weeks ago, was that nah, new 911s are, need to stay the same weight. So even in spite of all the equipment going in, they need to stay uh, just as light as they are now. The Mazda MX-5, probably a poster boy for the lightweight two-seater sports car, um, is being worked on right now, the next generation. And what the engineers are saying is that they want it to be around 2,200 pounds, which would be, I think, lighter than the original which was like 2,300? Actually, I think the original was about 19. 19? Was it 19? Yeah. Okay. But, but then they got, it got bigger. I mean, the original is tiny. Yeah. It's the size of this table. Right. But, uh, but I think now they're up in the, I, I forget exactly, the 24 or the 2,600 pound range or maybe even 2,900. So it would be, I mean. They've gotten bigger. Well, yeah. No, yeah. Well, it was, it's, not, it's like, it's no more than, no, 2,575 I think is the current okay. one. Okay, yeah. But, you know, the, it's a 20 year, you know, going back in time. Right. And what they're saying is that, you know, Mazda introduced all these sky active technologies um, to lighten the cars up because instead of using high power, you know, that, that wouldn't be the Miata way. Right. So exactly the engineer right. says, um, we want to get back to basics, uh, 2,200 pounds. They are talking about using the tech concepts from this car. We have a picture of the uh, Mazda Ibuki, which was a concept brought out at the 2003 Tokyo Auto Show um, and using things like the twin backbone design of the RX-8 and then right. having this, what they call the uh, super front midship four-cylinder <laughs> layout, uh, which is a crazy Star Trek name, right. um, but it keeps the engine and all the major components in between, right, the, between axles. the axles. Yeah, and look, I mean, any, anything they take from the RX-8 is going to make it better. I, I think the RX-8 is, you know, is a wonderful handling car. Less weight with about the same amount of power Brilliant. I mean, you know, the, I, I love the the current Miata. Um, it is significantly bigger, but it's it's still just a fantastic car. So you I, know, if they can make it lighter and keep the power and keep the price, that's the other thing. The right. price has been creeping up. Now they're like it's like thirty thousand. Really? Get it's getting Ooh. there. I mean, they start they start at twenty three. Those don't exist. So right. you know, by the time you get the first option package in there, which has stuff you want like seats, you know, things <laughs> like that. It's. I mean, right. I was pricing one out, you know, for my wife and. That's, they're getting, they're getting up 30. there. Yeah. Well, and the design they're saying will be uh, will take uh, elements from this car. Uh, we have a picture of the Mazda Shinari concept they revealed earlier this year uh, in Milan. And frankly, all that means is that all we know that means is it's going to be swoopy. Well, the, uh, and also they're, they're they're backing off from the smiley face Nagare stuff. Which, thank God. Well, did you see the new Mazda Five? Oh yeah, with the exactly. Oh, it, that's it's oh, a problem. Oh. The new Mazda Five will be the LA Auto Show, um, but avert your eyes. Don't yeah. don't look at it. Yeah, um, it's a little unfortunate. We're halfway through the show, so let's keep it rolling. Okay. Speaking of Mazda, there is a uh, RX Nine on the horizon, which is supposed to be a successor to the very popular uh, RX Seven. It's going to be patterned after the last RX-7, which I think was the FC. That was the triple rotor, crazy, awesome. twin turbo, <laughs> awesome. uh, you know, uh, fast and furious, crazy, which they didn't sell that many of, and they all no. broke the ones they yes. did sell. But they were really cool. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> when they ran. Yeah. So it's, uh, this one's supposed to uh, be reminiscent of that. Um, a 300 horsepower engine, uh, it'll still be rotary, of course. Uh, gas or hydrogen probably won't be hydrogen, <laughs> and uh, what I find interesting is an electric supercharger, which is cool because you know the way a supercharger works is forces air into the engine, but they're run off the engine, so you actually use right. horsepower to create horsepower. 
this you're using electric power, yes. which you can get from a variety of sources. So you know it'll, it'll provide more power without sapping horsepower from the engine, which is also good because rotaries don't spool up very quickly. Um, and they want it to be about 2,500 pounds. Sounds ideal. Make it run on gasoline, not hydrogen. Bring it, bring it, bring it. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna bring in one comment from the chat room. Mm. It's the guy says uh, Mazda should just cut the crap and use rotary engines on the MX-5 Miata. Your opinion? No, the, the, the Miata's never had a rotary, and, 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 and the, the rotary on a Miata would be so small that it, it would be so gutless that it just, you, you don't want that. I, th I think uh, the inline four is the way to go on a Miata. That's how Miatas have been since 89. Let them stay and that no, way. And no change. I would Get change, change out of here. Forget I about it. I would change the RX's rotary, you know, and it works mm -hmm. for that application. Um, that, that's my opinion. I, I don't know. The next segment of the show, uh, now that we're done with all things Mazda, is called <laughs> Strap In. This is where we look at the future of what of the automobile. Anything we're going to be driving, not in two years, not in three years, more like 10, 20, 80 years. Uh, this week, we're going to look at car connectivity. So uh, automakers are working on, you know, they're the infotainment systems, the command and MMI and that. They're working on safety systems that could have cars talk to each other, help prevent accidents. Um, and they're also doing things like, you know, with the electric electrification of cars, uh, Nissan has its car wings. It's been adding features too, and it's saying that, you know, when you plug in uh, your car, if you so choose, uh, your LEAF will keep track of where you've been, your historical driving data, how much charge the, uh, the car used, um, and download it to this central database, and you can compare it to uh, other folks who drive LEAFs. Some folks are wondering, you know, what's this mean for keeping track of you? Now, we have a video from Audi that was working on a system last year called AIDA, which is uh, Effective Intelligent Driving Assistant. Um, and frankly, it's essentially Terminator with a happy face. <laughs> um, uh, but we have a video. Uh, let's check it out. Meet AIDA, your personal driving companion, who understands your driving habits, frequent destinations, and the city environment. AIDA offers you the right information at the right time in the right way. Here's how it works. AIDA learns from sensors inside your car and from sensors outside the car. AIDA learns about your routes and destinations and even learns of events and places in the city. With all this information, AIDA applies predictive and adaptive routing to accommodate you in everyday tasks. Here's an example. After one week of driving with AIDA, it starts to understand your most frequent stops. After two weeks, AIDA learns your favorite areas of town and preferred activities. Ada also learns how frequently you visit different areas of town and builds knowledge about the different activities you enjoy in the city. After a month, on a typical day, Ada knows when you are leaving work. Since today is your weekly shopping day, Ada suggests the optimal route of visiting your usual grocery store. Ada also notices that your fuel is running low, so your route is quickly adjusted to include a gas station before the grocery store. Once you're done shopping, Ada offers you a route home that suggests a route that detours downtown, AIDA receives real-time information about the city and knows of a street fair in downtown and assists you in avoiding traffic congestion. After a long day of work and errands, AIDA guides you safely home, always aware of your environment and restoring peace of mind to the commuter experience. AIDA is context aware, socially perceptive, intuitively responsive, your digital driving assistant. Now, I think that's kind of crazy. I mean, that your car, after a couple of months, has essentially a, blu a blueprint of your behavior. Um, and I think until you're, you know, it's all cool until your significant other gets in your car and your car says, <laughs> this isn't where you normally go you on Tuesdays, massages. Dave. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you want to call Rosie? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think. I mean, look, I would say, where's it all going? And I think there is some push in some segments of society that they don't want humans really driving cars anymore. They want cars to drive you places. And maybe you know stop you at a sponsored restaurant along the way. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if it works, cool. I, I don't know. I don't even know where to go with this. I mean, there's I so mean, exactly. Well, I think I think that's what's happening. In that you know, Terminator was one man right. came with a chip. I think right. we're now essentially Skynet. coming at the other end and building all these systems that one day will say, "Oh, hi, Dave. <laughs> I'm here." Uh, right. Um, and I don't think you should do that. Right, right. I don't mind it. I think I'll be dead long yeah, well, before well, these things the are concerned. Thing, the other thing, though, there's probably a whole, I'm, I'm married to one. There's a whole lot of people that don't like driving. 
They don't want to drive. And if they could just get in a car and be chauffeured to where they want to go and, and the car could tell them that there's, you know, something going on over there and there's a new restaurant over here and your your friends are over there and, you know, this is, they might love that. Well, those are called taxi passengers, not well, drivers. Well, yeah, but then, you know... I mean, you know, <laughs> there's a way to do it, you know. I mean, well, yeah. You know. Well, they're going to find a way, one way or the other. Yeah. Is but, but as far as the concerns about, like, oh, you know, will this information be shared? I mean, your cell phone, if you actually knew what was going on with right. your cell phone, it already has oh, Facebook, told. Facebook, if you it, knew what it, was. It has already told every corporation in the country, <laughs> you know, wh what you like to drink after 10 p.m. Like, trust me. <laughs> right. Like, it's, it, they know. They know. Someone's going to find out what's going to happen. It probably won't be us, but right, right, right. Uh, we'll look forward to it. Uh, back um, to the news. Okay. Uh, new Maserati SUV, possibly. Um, so this is kind of interesting. There's been, there was this really awful looking um, Maserati SUV concept called the Kubang. Kubang, 2003. <laughs> Kubang. We have a picture and, of it here. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, 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 it kind of looked like the Quattro Porte cross with like a Lexus RX. I mean, it's just not a good looking And by that vehicle. you mean ugly. Yeah, real okay. ugly. Yeah, I mean, it's just not Maserati. However, um, Fiat's tied up with Chrysler, blah, blah, blah. They have available now to them a Mercedes chassis. How? Well, the new Grand Cherokee is built on the MLGL platform. So Fiat could take that platform, which, it, you know, is a good platform. Yeah. They could stick a Maserati V8 into it, which is really a detuned Ferrari V8, and make a really cool SUV. Right. Should they? <laughs> I'm going to go with, well, <laughs> here, there's, there's the head and the heart. Yeah. It worked for Porsche. Yeah. It oh, saved Porsche. Yeah. Um, but Porsche made a great product. Well, okay. They, did, they didn't well, make it, so, you know. Right. It, you know. If, if, if Maserati doesn't make the Kubang and makes a Maserati <laughs> SUV, right. it could be neat. I mean, and there's nothing up there now, really, except right. for the Cayenne. You know, the Cayenne, Cayenne. right. Like, um, there's no performance hasn't, Bentley hasn't done it. Aston Martin hasn't made an uh, SUV yet. Um, well, the Lagondas, they said they approved it, it last week. Yeah, but they said they approved it two years ago. You right. Know I mean? So, so the, there is, I mean, that, that's the thing. And, and, it, and you kind of see this with, like, the, um, the Mercedes CL. Like, yeah, that's for really rich guys. Well, a really rich guy is just going to keep buying the CL every eight years, a new one, or they're going to say, you know what, I want a Bentley. Right. So are you going to keep buying the Cayenne, or are you going to say, you know what, I, I wouldn't mind, I like SUVs, I want a Maserati, or I want a this. So, they'll, they'll certainly sell some. They'll yeah, certainly and, sell some. And I, I think really the thing to say is, if it's good, good. If it's a bad car, bad. <laughs> okay, well, they have binary, it. Yeah. Um, uh, Maserati, hire this man. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. Uh, next, uh, BMW, speaking of supercar territory for uh, unexplored places. Uh, now, we said last week they had the vision efficient dynamics concept that they were going to uh, officially make real. That's this car right here we have a picture of. Um, now, the what they are but what, it's going to be a two hundred thousand dollar hybrid supercar, right. um, and in fact, it's what zero to sixty in uh, like five seconds. Yeah, four point eight seconds. Yeah, four point eight. Three hundred twenty-eight uh, horsepower, a three-cylinder turbo diesel with a hybrid motor. Sixty-two miles a gallon. Sixty-two miles a gallon and forty miles on electricity alone. Right. But so two hundred thousand dollars. Well, so they're making a two hundred thousand dollar Chevy Volt with gull wings. Right. In fact, we have a video of it uh, if you want to know what it's going to look like and when it shows up in 2013. Uh, let's see the clip. So uh, there is your two hundred thousand dollar BMW hybrid. Supercar. I think the real question is, what are they going to call it? Because you can't call it a vision, dy efficient vision efficient dynamics. dynamics. Yeah. But, so is this the M one? Hey, that would be uh, that might be cool. Because just so you know, so there's a new uh, uh, one series M coupe. Yeah. Talk about clumsy name. BMW loves clumsy names. They do. X Drive 35. <laughs> they they could have called the new M1 the M1, but instead they no, called it the one series M Coupe. You and can't they said call it the M1. Reserving 
uh, M1 for something very special. Well, this might Two hundred thousand dollars should be special. It's the most expensive BMW they have, so why not? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, sticking with the Germans, uh, the new Porsche Cajun. Uh, so this is going to be uh, based on the uh, Audi Q5 and the Volkswagen Tiguan, I think it's the, the chassis. Yeah. Um, it's going to compete with uh, the Range Rover, uh, Ev help me out, Evoque. Uh, the, uh, yeah, Evoque, the Evoque. E Evoque. And the BMW As in X, Evoque. Yeah, and the X4, which isn't quite out yet, but it might be coming out. Um, Does Porsche need to be in this space? Yes. Well, here, here's, <laughs> here's what I'll say. I actually just wrote something about this. Every space Porsche enters, they make really good products. The Boxster is really, really good. The 911, it's the 911. The Cayenne is an incredible SUV. If I can plug my own company, we just named the new one, the, the SUV of the year. Did. Uh, worthy, worthy. Yeah, definitely it, worthy. It's great, and the, I think the Panamera is just, the Panamera is awesome. <sighs> love the Panamera. I don't want to like it, but I love it. Yeah, love it. I yeah, mean, it's just, it, it's, it is awesome. It's, it's, it's a Porsche. Yeah, and, it's, and it, it's, it's just mean. But do they need to be here? Well, I don't know about need, but you know, it's a business. A business Why not needs do a 928 instead well, of? Well, well, um, okay, a business needs to make money, mm -hmm. and uh, where's the growth segment Porsche right now? Because Porsche doesn't do enough of that. Well, <laughs> but, I mean, where's the growth in, in the industry right now? Small crossovers are, mm -hmm. are growing faster than any other segment. So, yeah, I mean, from a business case, they need to be there. From a 13-year-old sitting in his mom's basement saying, <laughs> only a 911 is a real Porsche. Remember, when the 356 came out in 1963 in Geneva, all the, I'm sorry, when the 901, the 911, which was originally called the 901, and then Peugeot sued them, they changed it to the 911. When that came out, all the Porsche 365 guys were, were crying. It's not a real Porsche. It's too big. It's too luxurious. Oh, too many seats. I would say the only difference is now... <laughs> People, they got over that. People still say the, K, the Cayenne isn't a real Porsche. Not that they so should. What? Not that they should make this. You know, uh, so it, it's going to be mean, good. Who, who cares what people say? It's, it's going to be good. They're going to well. Yeah. Porsche, <laughs> don't listen to people. They're, Just do what you're doing. <laughs> we'll listen to money, which yeah. is what they're doing. Hey, and why not? I can't blame them. Okay. Uh, next up, racing. Racing. Uh, going really fast. Uh, speaking of Porsche. Saying nine, uh, VW has said no to F1 officially this week. Uh, there have been rumors, they've been talking to the FIA, um, the motorsports body, about getting into uh, motor racing, but they finally decided not to. There were a couple of options on the table before, um, and that was that they were going to either have a world engine, which was a small turbo four cylinder that the FIA wanted to use for rallying F1, uh, touring car. It would have been, it would have made spec series out of a whole bunch of stuff, which would have been horrible, um, or uh, Porsche or Audi getting into F1. Um, that, of course, they said no, so not going to happen, and there'll be nothing of the kind. Um, I think what Porsche was last with McLaren, I think, in the 80s. Oh, uh, um, yeah, you're asking me about stuff I don't know much about, so I, I don't know. Yeah. But, but I did hear, uh, and it says here too, that VW might instead go to WRC, and they're probably oh, right. going to take yeah. that little that little four-cylinder turbo with them to that. Yes. Which would be Which, cool. Yeah. I mean, That'd you know, cool. mini, you have mini, Ford, yeah. um, oh, what, Citroen, out, Citroen, so yeah, Subaru, Mitsubishi. Peugeot. You know, I mean, it'd be, it'd be fun. But Do it. Yeah, Do it. F1 would have been cool. Um, Renault is uh, leaving F1. Yeah, that's um, kind of... Well, which is not surprising. I mean, F1 no. has gotten crazy expensive. Renault's got other things to focus on. Renault and right. Nissan. But they're Infinity. still going to be supplying engines to F1 they're, teams. Yeah, like Red going Bulls. to be going back to just being an engine supplier. So they have, uh, this is the Red, uh, the team as it is now. We have a picture of uh, the Renault team as bought by Genie Capital, that guy in the center, uh, Eric Boulier, I think is his Boulier, name. No. Um, so Lotus is actually talking about now, there's already a Lotus team. Uh, been a big snafu with that. Um, they took their name away from the guy, Tony Fernandez, who was running it. And now they want to get into racing themselves, so they're thinking about buying the Renault F1 team. And then the Lotus team, as it is now, will become One Malaysia Racing, uh, which <laughs> no one will remember or care about unless they win, which won't happen for a while. Right. Um, but... Hey. Sad to see Renault go. I mean, they started off though as an engine supplier, and then got mm -hmm. you know, and then won everything right. um, as a racer. And maybe they'll but, come back. And uh, you know, I don't know. F one is it's. I mean, there's going to be Ferrari racing Red Bull, and that's going to be. I mean, it, well, yeah, it's, it'll be yeah Ferrari and Renault <laughs> engines and McLaren, yeah, and which McLaren. is essentially what and it McLaren. is right, now. Right. Um, next up, this uh, we have a picture of is your new Le Mans racer. Speaking of the French. So Peugeot, which uh, took on the might of Audi, 
with its 908 HDI uh, diesel Le Mans car won in 2008 or 2009. Um, the only victory it had. Now it wants, it has just created uh, this, which is called the 90X. Actually, I think uh, it's the 90X. Oh, sorry. Because, it, well, everything was the, 908, right. and they've actually the run out. That's the problem X. with those stupid right. naming conventions. So, um, yeah, yes, uh, Neuf 08. So they, yes. it's a closed cockpit uh, diesel hybrid. Um, with a shark fin. The big shark fin, which we see a lot of in F1, is to keep the car ideally on the ground uh, in case of a high-speed spin. Right. Um, no more Mercedes, GL, GT, R antics. Um, hey, man, 30s Tatra technology for the... Yeah, <laughs> for Tatra, the yet again. Hey, how do, um, you how do you get it in there? So uh, that's car that they want to win next year. Um, Audi just introduced its racer earlier this year. They'll be going back to Le Mans next year. And Le Mans, uh, Aston Martin will actually be an LMP1 as well. So next year's race should be very, very good. Yeah, this stuff is so cool. Um, uh, back to <laughs> the know. news. Mm, the news. Uh, are we sticking with... Ford. Yeah, their stock price. Yeah. So for the first time since going public again, um, the Ford stock price uh, broke uh, $16. And remember, it got. I shouldn't say going public again. It just it got so cheap. It was almost. It was almost <laughs> fake. But uh, remember, it got down to like a buck twenty-two. Yeah. And I didn't buy any. Of course you didn't. I, of course, because they were gonna die. Be, that would be unethical. Well, uh, because they, and they were gonna die. They were gonna. There was Everyone that too. They were so now it's die. sixteen bucks. Right. And congratulations, Ford. There's the uh, the yeah, crap. And all, um, all those people I know who bought some. <laughs> now we uh, are going to. Yeah. We won't talk about your Swiss accounts right now. I promise. <laughs> yeah. um, but so uh, speaking of Ford and truck commercials, now Ford mm. has its new. Um, truck commercials out, and these are all about trucks and features and straight up. And the Ford has said that customers think these commercials are uh, original, or are, sorry, clever, unique, and informative, um, which is essentially, if you like Dennis Leary, you'll love them. Let's, let's see one of them. Hey, here's a little good news. If you want decent mileage in a pickup, you don't have to order your engine off the kitty menu anymore. Say hello to variable cam timing, direct injection, and piston cooling jets. Yeah, the engineers at Ford have been busy. They got four, count them, four all-new truck engines for the 2011 F-150 to give you the most power, the most towing, and the best fuel economy. Now that's tasty. This is the future. This is the new F-150. So there's uh, trucks, there's engines, there's a, a like man, it. a giant I man with like a grill. I like I it. mean, there's men. Well, the only thing I don't like, I wish I would have said most power, most towing, or most fuel economy, because it's you don't get the most towing with it. But aside from that, I love guys in lab coats working on engines. That's great. I, that's <laughs> it, anything that looks like uh, like the early 1960s when you had a bunch of dudes in short sleeve uh -huh. button up shirts with ties and thick glasses like this right. reminds me of like NASA and going to the moon. That's cool. That's good. I'm gonna buy that. Fat dude sitting around drinking oil, like you know, molesting that's, yeah, no buffaloes. <laughs> molesting <laughs> buffaloes. It's not okay. It's not gonna sell me. Well, stuff. we'll call PETA when this is done, just yeah. to make sure. But no, I, I think that's a good, good commercial. Um, uh, that's Ford's truck campaign. Uh, you be the judge. Um, uh, Traffic. Oh man, okay, so yeah, so okay, there's a new traffic offense camera, which is creepy enough sounding. It's being tested, and it can, it can identify five different offenses at once. Uh, tailgating, uh, driving too fast, not wearing your seatbelt, um, out of date tags, and if you have insurance or not. And that's, and that's speeding and driving too fast for conditions. <laughs> oh yeah, so I mean, this just sounds like a nightmare. And once again, we're going back to there's a, there is a, someone out there. There's a, there's a, there's a group of people that don't want you driving a car <laughs> for some reason. Well, they don't want you doing it unsafely. Whatever by that their means. definition Whatever of that means. unsafe. Right. So th this this sounds like uh, one of Dante's uh, circles of hell. I think this is the. The, the seventh inner circle, which which, is, and which means it also sounds European, and which uh, is strange because you know you have on the one hand Autobahns and uh, the uh, European cars and this mad, mad, mad car culture, and on the other you have you have a picture of this camera. So if you go to Europe or if you're in Europe and you see this guy, that's the guy that's going to get you one way but or another. They, they have cops, right? I mean, the cops do stuff. Uh, well, but the uh, cops are busy not having guns <laughs> and walking and but, meeting uh, people. I mean, it's just nuts. Now, I mean, the nice thing. Um, 
is that they look really fragile and uh, you know, <laughs> very, 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 you know, they could be subject to vandalism quite easily. Well, the only thing about that is that they're, they're mounted on a trailer, and so you figure there's going to be some guy. Oh. They'll probably give that guy guns. The guy uh, well, driving that trailer, they'll well, give him guns I mean, look at those, to protect those little the camera. wheels could go flat. Oh, I mean, right, that, that, yeah. That, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it, this is just horrible. Yeah. They're think. testing them in Finland now. They're supposed to roll out across Europe in 2013, and oh, inevitably, Finland. when they work, they're going to come here, just so you know. Even though the last election, uh, speed cameras got beat and red light cameras got beat everywhere. Yeah. Well, I don't think this uh, would work were, too uh, well in America. I mean, we're, we're, we're way too independent. Plus, plus, <laughs> plus what's, what, one thing I like about our kind of, uh, you know, wagon to westward mentality is that it's a game. Like, you know, yes, cops can give you a ticket, but it's a game to avoid the cops. And, you know, it's a smoking right. the bandit. And so and I, I don't think cops would like this stuff. I mean, you know what I mean? It takes, it takes all the fun out of it for them. Um, uh, this, so. it, yeah, I look out for those, but I, yeah, I hope they never get here. Um, mm. So the uh, quickly with the Mercedes, mm. the Mercedes SLK, uh, internet comes to Mercedes finally. A three-pointed star uh, can get you online. Now in BMW, they use a SIM card for their internet connectivity, so the car is essentially a giant phone. Right. The Mercedes is going to tether to your phone. Right. Um, which is a smarter way to go. I mean, that, that's, that's like what Ford does with sync. And it's like, as phones get better, we'll just get better along with the thing right. you already have in your pocket. Yeah. So and I, then you I, control it through the steering wheel or through your phone. Yeah. Um, and the, you know, the sort of iPod out, your phone appearance will show up on the Mercedes screen. So it won't be like a new set of controls to learn. Instead of your phone, you'll have it right there. Sound, sounds smart, but once again, taking away from driving and I don't know. Again, I don't know. But like I said, there's, a, there's an effort. There's so, so. But a good driving car. Now, we're, we're only going to talk about this car because Lieberman thinks it's kind of interesting. That's a quote. It's kind of <laughs> interesting. And this is the Hennessy Venom. Right. Which, um, in case you weren't here last week for the video, it's this car here. We yeah. have a photo of. And it's a stretched Lotus Exige with a uh, GM LS9, which is the Corvette Zero One motor, with uh, stuffed in the back, and you can get it regular flavor, 725 horsepower, 740 some pound feet of torque, or get it John Hennessy crazy Texan style, which is a, a 1200 horsepower twin turbo, and the thing weighs 2800 pounds, costs 600 grand, and goes 270 mm -hmm. miles an hour. Well, the the, the base <laughs> model costs 600 grand. The oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, horsepower costs version. a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's cool, and, and I talked to some guys um, that, that went and saw it down in Cars and Coffee this weekend, and they said it actually in person looks a lot better than it photographs, uh -huh. which means it has a lot of angles and curves to it. Well, I mean, you but, know, two point two seconds into the sixty. I mean, we're getting into motorbike. Well, times. I mean, you know, remember and the from the eighties, the Group B, the Ford RS two hundred was that was that was zero sixty one point well, nine seconds in dirt. So this is still slow. Rally cars. Yeah, but this is also, still slow. But you can buy this and take it to Cars and Coffee. <laughs> wow, who can buy with this? Starbucks? You can't buy this. <laughs> yeah. Six hundred grand for the for the um, slow one. <laughs> yeah, I just I feel like it's uh, it's neat, but it's um it's kind of, I feel like it's kind of a cop out. We gotta drive to it. take. We gotta drive it to take a Lotus. How, and, how did you feel about the Gumpert before you drove it? The Gumpert Apollo. Well, the Gumpert, before you drove the Gumpert was a clean sheet Hang car. On. Before and he you said, well, I, th I thought the Gumpert was ugly. Um, yeah. I, I thought it was, I was like, oh, look at it. It's like a rhinoceros. It's ugly, but look at it. There's a, ma a majesty to it. And then once you drove it? Oh, my God, it's awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I would say this, though. Yeah, clean sheet, but, but Hennessy is a tuner. So he's yeah. doing the ultimate tune of, look, look what, when you buy an Exige, you're paying 60 grand for a 1.8 liter Toyota motor with a rope shift transmission <laughs> that doesn't even have baffles in the oil pan, so it starves if you go around corners, you know, I mean. There I'm, is that. So I think for Hennessy, it's pretty good. Okay, I'll reserve judgment. All right. We, we will go drive we'll it. We'll drive it. And then All I'm right. sure I'll think, oh my God, <laughs> I have to have it. Johnny, give me your wallet. Um, oh, yeah. Because in your black card. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, we don't have much time left. Okay. So now we're going to go to a segment we call Junk in the Trunk. Junk in the Trunk. Which is all the stuff that's not real news, not enough for a real story that we just throw in back, which is right now. So, uh, we have a Morgan three-wheeler. This is a vehicle they made from 1909 to 1953. Uh, it is powered by a 1,000cc Harley-Davidson uh, motor. 100 horsepower to the rear wheel, uh, top speed of what? 150 miles an hour, uh, zero to 60 in four and a half seconds. Uh, Gimme, where do? How do really? I sign up? Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Honestly? Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh my God! What are you oh, gonna do yeah. with this? I don't care. Outside I love of Disneyland. It. I love it. Look at that. <laughs> That's fantastic. Uh, really? Oh yeah. Okay. S simple. Simple. 
Simple. Nothing to it. 1,100 pounds. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, cheese is simple, but we don't. Ah, I want it. I okay. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. Well, then, um, yeah. then when you when you get one, yeah. I'll come over to my Hennessy Venom, and <laughs> we'll go for it. We'll swap. Okay. Uh, the Citroen Metropolis, which mm. is the, will be called the DS9. We have a picture of that as well. Uh, get ready to hear this a lot in the future, only for China. Um, I just bring this up because I think that is a gorgeous car, uh, Citroen. You know, I gotta say, this is the first time I've ever looked at a car that has suicide doors and not liked it. I think that if they would have moved the handle, I love the car, I want it, okay. I want it, I want it, but it's just that giant soap bar handle. You don't like that? I just, I, or is it, you say you don't like where it is? I just, yeah, that, that kills it. it just, I think it's gorgeous, it's sinister, Chinese gangster, all that, but the the hand, I don't know. Roll somehow did it good. This isn't. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm being then, picky. then I, we, I no, we'll we'll go to China yeah. <laughs> once we're done with the uh, the three wheeler and the other, <laughs> the and we'll drive this too. Oh yeah. Uh, and see what we think. Oh yeah. Um, uh, the Fast Five, which is the fifth installment of the Fast and the Furious, coming out next June. Uh, what June tenth, two thousand eleven, and you're probably not going to think about that before then, which is only right. Is Vin Diesel in it? Yeah, Vin Diesel, The Rock. Dude. Oh, dude. Paul let's go. Walker, oh, The Rock. Let's go. Let's go. Um, uh, uh, June, other people I'll, I'll, and I'll, The Rock. June 10th. So, yeah, June 10th, calendars. You, um, you saw the fourth one. No, I haven't seen them since the first one. Are you kidding oh, me? Oh, the fourth one's good. The fourth one is like <laughs> the, the first one. And the by good, you mean. <laughs> Did you like the first <laughs> and one? And by good, you mean. I live my life a Stop quarter it. mile at oh a time. God. Come on. Oh, my God. Oh, um, I can't wait. Do we have bourbon in here? <laughs> um, Not yet. GT5 is coming out December 31st. That's New Year's Day <laughs> um, at SEMA last week in Vegas. Uh, they're printing the yep, discs. Exactly. We're printing the discs as we speak, and we're already working on GT6 is what we were told. So if you can forget about mistletoe for a moment, GT5 <laughs> will be waiting for you um, instead of that kiss that you were surely going to get. And that, my friends, is our show, except for one last thing, stormondemand.com, who, uh, who makes all this possible. Um, cloud computing. For us, for all of this weekend shows, stormondemand.com. I want to thank my guest co-host, Johnny Lieberman, senior editor of MotorTrend.com. Thank a, you for coming down. Ball. Thanks, Johnny. Um, a pleasure doing the show, and we will see you next week with more good stuff. Till then.